Hello everybody. Welcome to SMB Growth Seminar. In this particular case study on how trade agreements can expand the market, we are going to see a very interesting and very novel case study in my opinion, which can give a thought process to all business entrepreneurs how a situation can be used effectively uh, so that the business can increase. I find this case study very interesting. I hope uh, you also find it interesting. Let us get into the case study. Now, this is in Uttar Pradesh. Let us see what was the situation before the case study began in Uttar Pradesh. There is an agricultural group of people uh, where they produce black rice. A few set of farmers in Uttar Pradesh. They also call it as Kala Namak rice, which is GA tag. It is a geo indicated and this Kala Namak is also known as Lord Buddha's gift because the history goes back and tell that Lord Buddha, when he broke his fast, he was uh, given as a gift uh, this black rice and he appreciated the aroma of the black rice. So it has got some connection to Lord Buddha. So before this case study began, the farming area for this Kala Namak rice was just about some 2400 acres and the farmer was getting just about 40 rupees per kg when, when he was producing this Kala Namak. And of course the rice was not so popular across the world. And then the decision was taken about three years back or two and a half years back. Let us increase the export of this rice. Now, what was the situation in this business? Obviously, not much was getting exported, only about one and a half, two percent. Even within India, much less was getting consumed, very less. And of course, it is not well marketed in the countries where India has signed FTA. Though we had signed FTA, the, not much was getting marketed. This rice was not, I mean, just about 2% was being exported across the world. It was a situation before the case study. In this situation, I always ask, what would be normal course of action? So this is something we have to keep asking the question. What normally people would have done? First thing, try to sell more and more within India. That's what people would have tried. Price may increase by luck, by chance if the demand increases, price may increase and our farmers may get a little bit better price if possible. That is provided the demand increases within India. So while this rice has been available for centuries, this rice is not a new rice, it has been there for centuries, never there was a push to popularize this rice, right? Now this is in spite of the fact that this rice is claimed to be having many benefits. So this was the business situation as well as what normally people would have done. Now, what are the preparatory analysis was done by the government as well as experts in Uttar Pradesh at this time? This is what is very interesting. It is believed there is a connection between Lord Buddha and this rice, which is what I narrated a couple of slides back. Now, they found that many countries which had signed FTA with India had connection with Lord Buddha too, right? Lord Buddha is there, is now worshipped in many, many other countries too. And interestingly, they found most of these countries where there is a connection to Lord Buddha, they consume rice also. So they saw there is a coincidence of all these facts. Then a team was formed to take actions. Now, the preparatory analysis always plays a key role. As usual in any case study, always the preparatory study and analysis is very critical before any action is taken. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give a pause here and ask you, Assume that you are heading the task force okay, in Uttar Pradesh and the situation was narrated in a couple of slides back and now. Under this situation, as a task force head, what you would have recommended? What you would have done? Can you share your thoughts? That was the situation, not so popular. There are a lot of connection between Buddha, Lord Buddha, as well as to the countries which respect and pray to Lord Buddha. Now, what you would have done? Now let me narrate what this government and what this task force did. Very interestingly, they branded the rice as Buddha rice or Buddha's gift because earlier there was no branding. Black rice was sold as a black rice. Now they gave a brand name called Buddha rice and you know why, right? Lord Buddha's connection with the black rice, I will not use the word exploited, they used it. It is a fact that there was a connection. Why not call it as Buddha rice? which is the, if you ask me, is the master stroke. Lord Buddha's figure was very prominently displayed in the rice bag because he has a connection to the black rice. And the countries consuming rice with the Buddhist connections were reached out. What this task force did, hey, look here. This is the history. 
This is what Lord Buddha did. And we have that black rice and it is named as Buddha rice. Are you interested? Gentlemen, ladies, just guess what would have happened. Obviously, right? I mean, when they, when, when they respect Lord Buddha so much and they know that he had consumed this rice to break the fast, there is a personal and emotional connection. The moment they reached out, since most of them were also at a trade agreement with India, there are many advantages. Because we saw in the previous presentation and we saw in the concept video, many advantages are there when you sign a trade agreement between two countries. The system is clear, the tariffs are clear. So many advantages are there also between two countries. Why not? So immediately people were willing to buy also. This is what I call there is a branding action taken place. There is popularizing history, there, those actions took place and combine that with using FTA. I mean, it is a clever combination of branding and history and also using FTA to the positive advantage of both the countries. Why not? So, this is what was done by UP government and also the task force. So, what happened ladies and gentlemen, the, I would call this a very miraculous result. I mean, you know the previous figure, some 2500 hectares and some 40 rupees per kg farmers are getting. Just look at it. In 2018, only some 2,700 hectares were under production and that increased drastically to 12,000 hectares. Uh, 2,700 to 12,000 is a huge number. And then rice exported started to Singapore, Nepal and to Japan. And then export increased to about 2% to 7%. Remember, 2% to 7% is not a small number, it's a huge number. And Vietnam, Cambodia, Korea is all being considered for export and they are in discussion. Just imagine what it can do. And importantly, most importantly, the farmer who produces this black rice, where he was getting earlier 40 rupees per kg, now is getting 134 rupees per kg, which means that farmer is becoming more and more richer and more and more money is coming into the system. The whole ecosystem becomes much more better, right? What is the learning from this case study, ladies and gentlemen? You see the picture on the right side. Now, not only UP, now that is from Manipur. There is a picture of Manipur exporting their first lot of black rice to Europe. What it means is, why not? I mean, every, every state is now thinking, very good. This is a good option which can be used. Now, they are trying to send it to Europe. That is a picture of very first consignment going to Europe recently. Now, the lessons from the case study. There are always opportunities. We keep telling there are opportunities all the time, but one need to keep looking for it and make use of them. There is no point in complaining. There are no opportunities. You see this case study, everything was there before. For centuries, we are always been you know, harvesting black rice, but this idea never came, right? Now this became a win-win idea. Second takeaway and learning I would say is just having FTA may not be useful. I mean, we, we said in the concept video, go through FTA, go through FTA. But if you remember very last uh, slide, we said reading is okay. You have to look into how to make use of the classes in the FTA. So what is important is we have to find a way to connect the dots. Which are the products which are popular? Who is the consumer? Which country it is going? The connecting the dots is a habit that we need to build as an entrepreneur. Then there are profits. Three, especially if between two countries, especially between India and any other country, is our cultural, historical, our people-to-people -people connect is there. And if that can be tapped, again, it is going to lead to win-win situation and also to the profit to the, uh, the entire ecosystem. We always say, go through FTAs line by line with passion and energy to see those connections. Don't read it like a book. Go carefully, word by word and see where these connections can be uh, dots can be connected so that it can be profitably used in a win-win arrangement between the country which is exporting and which is importing. And thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for any implementation support and handholding in this regard. Please reach out to me. My mobile number, my email ID and website is given. Thank you. Looking forward to meet you again.